how did your favorite creators do it? How did they become some of the biggest creators on the internet? The most undervalued aspect of succeeding in the world of media today. Everyone can have fun making videos, but turning it into a job, that's great. But you should be happy making videos, never making a dime off of it. All you need to do is make 100 videos and improve something every time. How did these YouTubers generate millions of views, millions of subscribers, and from a creator standpoint, build the perfect life? In today's video, I'm gonna go through five life lessons we can learn from some of the biggest creators on YouTube. I was pretty shocked when I found this stat out, but as of when this video was uploaded in 2023, it was almost eight years ago, Casey announced he was gonna start vlogging. Starting today, my 34th birthday, I'm going to make a movie every day. This was the point for many of us, myself included, when I actually discovered Casey. And over this eight year period, Casey released over 900 vlogs and amassed over 12 million subscribers. Over the last few years, as Casey has sort of taken his foot off the gas with regards to vlogging, he's been a bit more open on podcasts with regards to his, basically his filmmaking journey, but also his vlogging journey. And there is one key factor that keeps coming up on these podcasts that sort of underpins it all. It's extremely uninteresting and no one wants to hear that it takes time but it takes time. Patience is really the most undervalued uh, aspect of succeeding in the world of media today. So I think Casey's point in saying you need to have patience kind of has two meanings. Number one is understanding whatever your endeavor is. For example, let's say me making these videos. I have an understanding that if I want 100,000 subscribers, it's not gonna happen overnight. This is gonna take time. This is gonna take months. It's gonna take years. And I've gotta be prepared for that. And number two, having this understanding and this almost expectation that this isn't gonna have an open night, it means that you can relax a little bit more and you can actually enjoy the process. And when you do achieve whatever it is that you are trying to achieve, you'll be so much more appreciative of it. So if you feel like you're spinning your wheels right now, you're not quite where you want to be, you're maybe making a bit of momentum, but you're, you're still not there. The end goal isn't in sight. Keep going, be consistent, be disciplined, be patient. Ali Abdul recently broke down in one of his videos five key lessons that he learned along his journey to becoming financially free as a creator. And amongst those five lessons, there was one that really stuck out to me, and that was never stop learning. Always be a student. I biased to action so much to the point that I forgot to learn along the way. And so the advice that I would implore my younger self who is on this journey of financial independence is lesson number four, please make time every single week to learn things. I feel, I feel very passionate about this. I would just implore myself, there are books about this stuff. You do not need to invent the playbook from scratch. Please take my advice, learn from the mistakes that I've made. Please learn along the way, but remember that action is the foundation and learning is the supplement. Continually learning is something that I always force myself to do. I was the kind of kid at school where I didn't really like learning. I liked learning about the things that I wanted to learn about, but I didn't like learning about the things that I wasn't very good at. Whereas as I've got older, I've actually sort of lent into those things that I'm not very good at. And I've realized I'm not very good at these things. I should probably learn to be better at them. Whether it's listening to a podcast, whether it's reading a book, whether it's watching a video, whether it's hiring a coach, whatever it is, there's always areas where you can improve. For example, I'm self-employed. I run my own business and I have been for five years now. One thing that I massively neglected when I first started that business was the understanding of sales and marketing. And so recently I was like, I'm not very good at this. I should probably get a good understanding of this. So I went and brought books. So for example, $100 million offers by Alex Hormozy, Dotcom Secrets by Russell Brunson. We've got Oversubscribe by Daniel Priestley, I'm still currently reading this one. And since reading these books, I've had so many light bulb moments where I'm like, oh, I wish I knew this when I first started my business. So of course, continue to get better at the things that you're already good at and just get better and better at those things, but don't neglect the things that you're really bad at. Work hard to learn about the things that you know nothing about. Now I want you to take a moment and I want you to think what comes to mind when you think of an athlete? What attributes come to mind? What key words come to mind when you think of an athlete? For me, it's someone who's absolutely obsessed with their sport. The only thing that they want is to be the best. Whatever sport it is, whether it's the UFC, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, whether it's CrossFit, I think the athlete's main objective is to be the best. It's not to be good and hopefully one day everything pans out, it's to be the best at what they do. Chris Williamson, the host of Modern Wisdom, perfectly describes how you can take this mentality and apply it to whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Uh, one of my friends, David Perel, wrote a blog post called Think Like an Athlete. And I really wondered what would happen if I treated podcasting like an athlete would. I quite like being dedicated to the thing that I've said. I've said that this is the thing that I want to be really good at. Why would I leave more on the table? What, yeah. because it's cool? Because it's cooler to just rock up and not, not do things correctly. 
That doesn't seem cooler to me. Every part of an athlete's life is dialed into that end goal of being the best. So what would happen if you took that same mentality and applied it to whatever endeavor it is you're trying to achieve? Right now, my main goal is to grow this channel and I've gone all in. If YouTube was a lemon, I am literally trying to squeeze as much juice as I possibly can out of it. For some reason, the word obsessed is almost negative. There's a negative connotation around the word of being obsessed with something, but I've never understood that since when has being so so focused, so obsessed with one single goal been a bad thing. So if there's something you want to pursue, if there's something that you want to achieve right now, go all in, don't tiptoe around it. It's so easy to get sucked into the latest trend. If you see something performing really well for someone else, let's say it's on YouTube and it's a particular type of video, it's so easy for you to be like, well, I'll just recreate that type of video and it will perform well on my channel. I myself have been pulled in that direction before. But Marquez makes a brilliant point about remaining focused on what the main objective is. Kind of the way I think about it is everything we do has a really specific reason for doing it. When it comes to channels that are like doing too much, I think they're kind of diving into things because they're happening. Like NFTs might mm -hmm. be an example, like, oh, NFTs are a thing. Okay, if we're gonna be a smart business, we better have an arm in that. Yeah. And it, it makes sense, but I, when you spread yourself that thin, you can kind of see when someone's not fully invested in each of those things. We wanna be fully into everything we do and have a reason for everything. I think a key takeaway from this, and I've definitely taken from this one, because this is something that I did not do, is to make sure that you ask yourself questions before taking action on something. And that question being is, why am I doing this? A little bit of a story here, but I'm a videographer, and as a videographer, that natural progression to scale your business from just yourself is to go either into a video production company and build your own video production company, or go into a more of an agency route. So last year, that is exactly what I started doing. However, I didn't ask myself that question, why am I doing this? And I just went head first into that, I'm just gonna start an agency, the business is outgrowing me, let's start an agency. And guess what? It didn't work. Now hindsight is a beautiful thing and I can reflect on that and get an understanding of why that didn't work. And the reason is because I didn't ask myself that question, I didn't say, why am I doing this? I just went straight into this. Now, if I asked myself, why am I doing this? Then I would have got an understanding of, I don't actually know why I'm doing this. This isn't what I want to do. Which leads me on to my next point, which is the following question should be, do I want to do this? So if you're taking action on what is potentially a big step for yourself, just take a step back for a moment and ask yourself those two questions. Why am I doing this? And do I want to do this? Now, if you've gotten to this point of the video, then thank you very much. There is just one more creator, and this creator is the person that got me into self-development in the first place. Teaching me that moving the needle inch by inch, millimeter by millimeter, no matter what it is, as long as it's moving forward, it's still progress. Too often we wait for motivation to strike. Whether we want to pick up a fitness habit or start a new side project, we think we need to feel fired up to begin. As author Robert McCain says, the common misconception is that motivation leads to action, but the reverse is true. Action precedes motivation. You have to prime the pump and get the juices flowing. No matter the change you're looking to make in your life, the only thing you need to get started is the first step. That small step turns into another, and then another, and it won't take long for the momentum to build, and before you know it, you're motivated. I'm curious to know how many of you have made it to this point in the video. So let's get like a little secret club going. If you made it to this point of the video, if you watched it all the way to here, then comment below with the donut emoji. I like donuts. Donuts are like the king of desserts. Put the donut emoji below if you made it to this point. So that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.